Hello and welcome to the Artemisia Gentileschi exhibition at the National Gallery. Now Artemisia was one of the greatest of all Baroque artists, but she was also a woman and that of course made her special in interesting ways. I mean she wasn't the first woman artist in Western art, but she was the first who imbued all her work with a sense of her femininity. It makes her work powerful, it makes it pioneering, and it certainly makes it exciting. As you come through the door, the first picture you see, it kind of slaps you around the face really, is this. And it shows this famous biblical story of Susanna and the elders. And Susanna was a Hebrew wife who was lusted over by a couple of old men in the village. And they watched her while she was bathing and tried to force her to have sex with them. She refused and they took her to court. They lost the case, she won the case. So it's a kind of feminist story, if you like. But Artemisia has made something so creepy out of it. Lots of Baroque artists painted Susanna and the elders, but never with this intimate sense of the blokes crushing into her space, leaning right over into her confidence zone. But the really extraordinary thing here is that when she painted this, she was probably 16, at most 17. Now this show ahead of us tells us an awful lot of things about Artemisia Gentileschi, but one of the first things it says is that she was a prodigy. She could paint better earlier than just about anybody else in Western art. When Artemisia was 17, she was raped by a friend of her father's, another painter called Agostino Tassi. And this rape was to have a powerful impact on her life, of course, and it was a very infamous court case that resulted from it. And one of the things they've got here is an actual transcript of the court proceedings. And what's wonderful about it is that you could hear Artemisia's voice, the things she said, the way she spoke. Sometimes they tortured her to make sure she was telling the truth. But she always came back with these snappy reposts, these witty answers. And she emerges in this show as someone who wasn't just a tragic victim, but was a really rounded and interesting figure. This is probably Artemisia's most famous image. So famous she did it twice. And fortunately, the National Gallery's managed to get both versions up at once. It's Judith beheading Holofernes. Now, Judith was a Jewish heroine who fought back against Holofernes and beheaded him. So a very feminine subject, and a subject which, because of Artemisia's rape, felt particularly personal. But uh, what I like is the way the two pictures are subtly different. I mean, they're both gory because one of the great lessons of Caravaggio was that violence is something that makes people look at art. It's a bit like Sam Peckinpah movies in the, in the 80s and 90s. You know, violence is just something that shakes you out of your everyday rhythm and makes you notice things. What's wonderful is the actual detail here. Look at this gigantic sword that she's wielding as she cuts off the poor guy's head. And here, there's just a little bit of blood pouring out of him. It's savage, but it's not quite a gore fest. By the time she does this, the second version, wow, look at the blood there. It's pouring out like water from a Baroque fountain. What a piece of drama that is. Now, the National Gallery didn't own any Artemisia Gentileschi until a couple of years ago when, very fortunately, they managed to buy this masterpiece by her. And this is St. Catherine, who was tortured with a horrible wooden wheel with spikes in it that was turned over her. But also, it's a self-portrait of Artemisia. So it's Artemisia as St. Catherine, identifying fiercely with her. And this is Artemisia as St. Cecilia, was another early Christian martyr who was tortured for her beliefs and who became the patron saint of music. That's why she's strumming away there. Look at that look on her face. It's very accusatory, isn't it? It sort of picks you out and seems somehow to make you feel a bit guilty. It's self-portraiture, but self-portraiture with these bigger ambitions. 
I think to somehow reach across the ages and identify with these sad, martyred figures of young women from the early Christian days. Now this room here shows the work that she started to paint when she moved back to Rome in the 1620s. And it's particularly clear here that everywhere she went, every time she moved on, her art changed a bit. I mean, this too is Susanna and the Elders. So it's that first subject in the show, the creepy guy staring at the naked woman. But here, it feels less antagonistic. It's calmed down. It seems to be more about the beauty of the flesh. And even the blokes don't look quite as horrible as they do in that wonderful picture that she painted when she was 16. So there's an attempt here, I think, to become a slightly more respectable Artemisia. So it's important to remember that she wasn't this feminist heroine beheading men all the way through her career. She had these phases. And the show judges beautifully, I think, the development from one phase to another. Although the show is basically chronological and takes us through all the main periods of Artemisia's career, it loses that chronology at the end and with a, a bit of sneaky exhibition making, it fast forwards through the Neapolitan years and brings us straight to the time that Artemisia spent in England. Because yes, she came to England. In 1638, just before the Civil War, she arrived here and worked on various decorative schemes with her father, Orazio. And what I really like here is that this famous painting was also painted in England. And it's one of her most famous images, Artemisia Gentileschi embodying art, art itself, symbolically. A lot of people have always said it's a self-portrait, indeed it's called a self-portrait, but we've seen the other self-portraits in the show and it's clear that isn't her. So this isn't a literal self-portrait, it's a symbolic self-portrait of her, her presence, of what art can be in the world. And because she's working with one figure, it's got that intensity about it again. So it's a fantastic ending to a fantastic show. Mm -hmm.